behind Indiana. Did it over the weekend. So that's why even though Duke is on the road, they're wearing white. It all feels a little bit strange, but ready to go here at the Watsko Center between Duke and Miami. As Jay said, Duke is trending upwards. Having won 15 out of 17. Joe Lenardi's got him as a four seed right now, but says they could keep moving on up. We'll see how it plays here tonight. With the ball, number 10, Paul Jobay making his first start. The freshman from Lille, France. He is starting to get a bigger role, Jay, because of the Miami injuries. Well, Bensley Joseph with the ball right now. He's going to have to have a good game, as is Keyshawn George. They're going to have to be more active than they have been in past games because of absences. Jobay gets the shot off. Can't finish it. Kyle Filipowski down with the first rebound of the night. So Caleb Foster getting the start again for Duke with Tyrese Proctor expected to come off the bench tonight. Duke getting into a little horn set. Two up top, two in the corners. Leads to a little low cross screen and then a screen for the screener. McCain into the paint, surrounded. The kick to Jeremy Roach with the shot clock running down now. The senior hoists a three and it won't go. Mitchell with the rebound and draws the foul. Boy, really good defense. It just wasn't finished off with the defensive rebound. And Mark Mitchell had a slow start to the season, but one of the best offensive rebounders in the conference, grabbing over two offensive rebounds per game. But you'll remember, Dan, he started off the season. Teams weren't even playing him yep. and forcing him to take threes. In ACC play, he's 6 of 14 from three. And I think one of the really impressive things about him, that was a mental hurdle he had, had to get over. And he got over it. And he's had a really good year. He has either led the Blue Devils in scoring or tied for the lead in scoring in three of their last four games. And you look around, you see McCain, you see Roach, you see Filipowski. Uh, but Mitchell has been a big contributor in conference play. Look at Poplar, who's been dealing with a sprained ankle, suffered that back in late December, a severely sprained ankle. The numbers haven't been quite the same since he came back, but he is explosive when he's on. And how about North Chad O'Meara? Everything but the finish. Duke is, is switching just about everything, and Jared McCain wound up on O'Meara. He got him to the rim, just didn't finish it. That's unusual for O'Meara. McCain steps into it and buries his first three of the night. Is anybody in this conference playing with a better rhythm right now than Jared McCain? And he's making a great claim for ACC Rookie of the Year. He has been spectacular. Miami four losses in a row coming into this one to Virginia, North Carolina, Clemson, and B.C. Everything but the Carolina game was on the road. And they've been dealing with injuries all season long. It seems like one or two guys are either out or playing through something. Wooga Poplar can play through things about as well as anybody as he gets the Canes on the board. Well, Norchad O'Meara rolled down Caleb Foster in the low post, and they doubled him in the post. It was with two guards. He threw out of it, and Poplar was able to get a drive on the weak side. Foster to the elbow. Now the kick to McCain. Poplar closes on him in a hurry. That was a really good closeout. Because McCain is going to shot fake, and a lot of people bite on that fake. Foster from the corner. Short on the three, Joseph the rebound. Bensley Joseph, one of the best defenders in the country. And he's going to have to be offensive minded in this game. Which he is capable of doing. Thought about the jumper, instead the kick. Keyshawn George a little strong on the three. The freshman from Switzerland has really opened up eyes in recent weeks for Miami. Really talented. A lot of spinning and right into traffic goes Filipowski. And eventually a foul. Duke was fortunate to get that ball after it was knocked free. And now they're going to get to the free throw line, too. A foul on Joe Bay. Yeah, Jim Larinaga asking the officials for a travel on that play. And he is upset. John Shire, 36 years of age, his second season as the head coach of the Blue Devils. You, you talk about a contrast here between a guy who's just in his second year and a guy in Jim Larinaga. He's on the Naismith Hall of Fame ballot in his 39th season overall. When Jim Larinaga got his first Division I head coaching job, John Shire wasn't born yet. That's how long and how well Jim Larinaga's been doing it. What are you saying? I'm he's saying old. he's mature. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. He's we're, wise we're and right mature. With him. Yes. We're right with him. <laughs> 
you and I are getting older, but our maturity is not, is not improving yeah, at all. It's not caught up. No, especially mine. Miami is a challenge because they play basically five out. You'll see Omir roll down into the low post, and here comes the double. It's a small one. And working hard inside is Omir, just having a sensational season, averaging almost 18 points and 10 rebounds per game, looking like a first-team All-ACC performer. And when that double comes over, that double's been small. So far, it's been two guards coming over because of the way the Miami offense is spaced out. And he can see over that double. That was just a really good cut by Joe Bay getting to the rim. Roach can't get by George. George 6-7. Shot fake, McCain put it up, knew he missed it badly, chased after it, but it's Miami ball. And there was that shot fake that Wilga Poplar bit on to allow that shot, but still the shot was incredibly difficult. Omir steps out, he can shoot the three out there. His three-point shooting has come a long way this year. George with a crossover, frees himself, but couldn't bank it home. And Miami's getting some good opportunities, they just haven't knocked him down. So far, Miami's defense, they're staying in front, not allowing driving lanes to the basket. Good help by George. Great shot fake by Roach. Great extra pass. Mitchell to finish. Boy, when you leave the floor on these shot fakes, you are really taking yourself out of the play. Really well done on those fakes against help and recover defense. Omir, second year for the Canes after a couple of years at Arkansas State. Where your Sun Belt player of the yep. year. Poplar drains the three to bring the Canes back within one. Don't have a hand up on Wilga Poplar. That's his 56th three-point make of the year. And he's had so many injuries, he'd have more than that if he weren't out for a period of time. Filipowski unguarded for a moment down low. Omir recovers. And Mitchell's got two more. Miami scrambling right now defensively and Duke doing a good job of finding the open man. He's trying to take away Filipowski then Mitchell finds himself wide open. What a start for Mitchell. Seven of the ten Duke points. George the drive and kick. Joe Bay misses the three and the weak side rebound to McCain. Now, Joe Bay can make that shot but I'm not sure off one pass. That's what Jim Laranega wants. Filipowski swings it to Roach. In and out. And Miami looking to push off a miss when they can. George fouled by Foster to take us to the first media timeout of the night. And Mark Mitchell, you talked about him right off the top, Jay, and he is having himself a good start. Over his last 11 games, Mitchell is averaging 15 points, close to eight rebounds per game. He has been a factor. Want to leave works all day, so I can keep working my magic. Just want to leave. 12 hours of uninterrupted pain relief. Aleve, who do you take it for? And for fast topical pain relief, try Aleve X. There's your biggie bag. All that food for five bucks, right. that's my go-to. Ooh, that's my ride or die. <laughs> Just like you and me. Bag boys. Bag boys, what you gonna do? Don't, what you gonna do when we bring your food? It. Go biggie and get all this with the JBC bag for just five boys, bucks. If advanced lung cancer has you searching for possibilities, discover a different first treatment. Immunotherapies work with your immune system to attack cancer, but Optivo plus Yervoy is the first combination of two immunotherapies for adults newly diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer that has spread, tests positive for pdl one and does not have an abnormal EGFR or ALK gene. Optivo plus Yervoy is not chemotherapy. It works differently. It helps your immune system fight cancer in two different ways. Opdivo and Yervoy can cause your immune system to harm healthy parts of your body during and after treatment. These problems can be severe and lead to death. See your doctor right away if you have a cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, irregular heartbeat, diarrhea, constipation, severe stomach pain, severe nausea or vomiting, dizziness, fainting, eye problems, extreme tiredness, changes in appetite, thirst or urine, rash, itching, confusion, memory problems, muscle pain or weakness, joint pain, flushing or fever. These are not all the possible side effects. Problems can occur together and more often when Opdivo is used with Yervoy. Tell your doctor about all medical conditions, including immune or nervous system problems, if you've had or plan to have an organ or stem cell transplant or receive chest radiation. Your search for two immunotherapies starts here. Ask your doctor about Opdivo plus Yervoy, a chance to live longer. As the head of HR, 
I help lead a successful home security firm. Our teams work hard to secure our customers' most valuable assets. And while they do that, I work hard to secure ours. Our people. That's why we chose Principal to provide the benefits and retirement plan that show our people just how much we appreciate them. Benefits help us keep top talent. Hi, Mom. Benefits help us grow because we know how important security is to all. Back for another flounder fish sandwich? And a shrimp tackle box. Let us do the fishing while y'all enjoy our seafood that you'll love. Get them before they're gone. This is an action Duke's going to have to deal with all game. Norchad O'Meara comes and sets a ball screen, and then after he sets a screen, Duke is switching, and he's going to roll his switch down into the low post. But when he gets the ball, he's going to get doubled. Now, this double is two guards. He can see over. Now, opposite, you see Wooga Poplar open. He gets it over there. Mark Mitchell doesn't make a great closeout, and it's an easy drive for a layup. Miami's getting good shots thus far. They've made some of them. They haven't made their open ones. If they can knock down some of these shots, they can have success against Duke switching. I got to tell you, that's some A-level telestration early in the night. You have set the bar pretty high for yourself. You know, I had to refill my finger with <laughs> yellow paint. <laughs> Duke up by three early in this one. We mentioned the Blue Devils have won 15 out of 17. Here are the two losses at home to Pitt. But wait. No Jeremy Roach, no Mark Mitchell. Down two starters in that game. The other loss at North Carolina. This is undeniably a team playing better than it did in November, December. Joseph, penetration and kick, and the three is way short for A.J. Casey, who just checked in. Shot clock didn't reset. Do they know it? They don't. Do they know it? They don't know it. And Wooga Poplar's looking to the bench as if to say, I didn't know, somebody's got to yell. They were on the far end of the court away from their bench, and just nobody realized. Well, one of the ways you can realize that is the ball never hit the rim. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I'll back you up. I, I second that one. Yeah. <laughs> Proctor is into the game for the first time now for Duke, and Mark Mitchell is going to the free throw line again. And that's just too easy, allowing that middle penetration. You know, the first thing you want to do is keep the ball out of the middle. Because once you're into the middle, you have to bring help. And if you help up, that's an easy drop off for a basket or a foul or both. Well, more basketball coming your way tonight. After this one, we will send you to Baton Rouge. Kentucky is in town to take on LSU tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN and the app. How good was Kentucky at Auburn on Saturday? Yeah. Their defense has been criticized and in some circles rightfully so. But they they put out on tape that they can be a good defensive team when yeah. they want to be. And I think John Calipari now can hold them to that standard. That was really impressive at Neville Arena on Saturday. John Stewart into the game for the first time for Duke. So remember, Miami is thin due to injuries and illness. We don't know yet if Matthew Cleveland is going to play. He did warm up, but he hasn't entered the game yet. But they're without Nigel Pack. And a foul going against the Blue Devils. Going Filipowski. Miami ran a, a little, they call it false motion, just to get the option that they wanted. Get the matchup you want and then take on that matchup. If Duke's going to switch everything, Take advantage of the switching. You saw Cleveland sitting on the bench. Apparently has been under the weather for a couple of days and uh, did some things that shoot around today, but won't know if he's going to play until we see him check in. Casey almost had it knocked away by Proctor. Good pressure by Duke defensively. Omir over Filipowski won't go and Stewart the rebound. Stewart is such a great athlete. His ability to run the floor, rebound, block shots. Boy, McCain a little bit too easy getting in there, but he missed it, and back come the Canes. This is where Miami can be dangerous in transition. George lost it, got it back, but missed the shot. And it's out of bounds to Miami. Both Christian Watson and A.J. Casey, and Watson just subbing into the game. They have not shown themselves to be consistent or reliable, but they're going to have to play good minutes in this game. 
That's why a guy like Paul Jobe is getting more time. And with all the injuries, Jim Laranega is trying to patch it together game by game. As Kyle Filipowski, who came into the game, having hit just five of his last 27 threes, still 35% of the season, knocks one down. Uh, not many big guys are going to run in transition straight to the three-point line and hit a shot off the catch like this. Miami's scrambling back, and you're thinking you got to get back to protect the lane with Filipowski, but he runs right to that right wing and knocks down the open three. His scoring is up from last year. His three-point percentage is up, and he's already got more blocks and assists than he had all of the last season. Keyshawn George with the steal and the finish. He is one talented freshman. When I first saw him earlier this year, he reminded me a little bit of Anthony Black that played for Arkansas last year as a freshman, went into the NBA draft and was taken number five. Filipowski, beautiful reverse jam. When he comes into a game with the mindset to be dominant, he can be dominant. And he's had some games of late where he's had eight points, he's been three of eight or something like that. But he can put 30 on the board in any given game, and he looks like he has that look and that mindset to start this game. Do we have. Well, we're going to break, so I'm not going to ask you that question right now. I'll ask you when I come back, but it'll be about Kyle Filipowski. Take us to break. That's called a tease in this <laughs> business, man, and so well done. Look at that spin along the baseline away from the double, big time. He hits his mark center stage and is crushed by a baby grand piano. You're replacing me? Customize and save with Liberty Biberty. He doesn't even have a mustache. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Chipotle's braised beef barbacoa might be our best kept secret. Slow cooked, responsibly raised beef. Seasoned with garlic and cumin. Hand shredded for fall off the fork tenderness. Chipotle's braised beef barbacoa. If you know, you know. I'm at gate six wearing a gray shirt. I'm at gate six wearing a gray shirt. For buying a treadmill? You use the Quicksilver card from Capital One. It's simple, with no annual fee and unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. That makes you the hero of every purchase. Yeah. And heroes don't take the stairs. Is this a parachute? Ah! Ah! What's in your wallet? I get to love. Tired of yada yada like exploding bells? Hey, I'm done with this yada yada. I'll get the paperwork. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. At Metro, there's no contracts, no exploding bells, and nada yada yada. Shopping, working, and relaxing online can attract various digital threats. To improve your protection against them, just turn on NordVPN. This cybersecurity app will block web trackers and malware infected sites. It will also encrypt your internet traffic without losing a smooth connection. Choose the VPN recommended by Forbes Advisor. Get the deal now. NordVPN, cybersecurity built for every day. True story, ACC titles are hard to come by. It's the Tar Heels and the Cavaliers in the hunt for a conference championship. Experience number 10, North Carolina, Virginia, Saturday at 4 on ESPN. On your left, Kyle Filipowski. On your right, Norchad O'Meara. When the ACC announces its first team, uh, all ACC at the end of the regular season, both of these guys going to be on there. To this point in the season, yes, there's still there's still some games to go, but I would say that R.J. Davis of North Carolina would be up with those two on first team, and P.J. Hall of Clemson I would put there. Now, what you do with the fifth spot uh, for first team all ACC? Uh, wouldn't you say like Hunter Salas of Wake Forest would be in that conversation? Blake Henson of, yeah. of Pittsburgh. 
Uh, I would have Armando Baycott of North Carolina in there, and I would also have Jeremy Roach uh, of Duke in that conversation. There may be others, but Jeremy Roach has had a spectacular season. Yeah, we talked to John Shire. Like, how can you be a senior guard at Duke having a good year as a team, very good year as a team, and you look at his numbers, and just about all of them are the best of his career as Bensley Joseph knocks down a three. Yet somehow Jeremy Roach, nobody ever talks about Jeremy Roach, and... This year, he's averaging 14 a game, shooting 45% from three, by far the best assist turnover ratio he's ever had, and uh, he is having a terrific year. Uh, year uh, last couple of years, people would say, well, you know, he turns the ball over a little bit. He's got almost a three to one assist turnover ratio, and his shooting numbers are ridiculous. He's close to a 50, 40, 90 guy. It's absurd. Filipowski with the left hand, and it's down to Watson and Miami. And Miami has numbers. Omir, the catch and the finish, and it's a two-point game. Anytime an offensive player goes to the ground, and on that play, Kyle Filipowski went to the ground, that means you're playing five on four. And Miami's too good not to score in a situation where they have that kind of advantage. Even without Nigel Pack and even without Matthew Cleveland, at least to this point of the game, there are a lot of good offensive players on this Hurricanes roster. And there's a pretty good one right there. How happy are Duke fans to see Tyrese Proctor back from concussion protocol and knocking down a three. They missed the Florida State game. But Proctor gives them another dimension because outside of Jared McCain, I think Jared McCain's the best shooter on this Duke team, but Proctor may be second. He can really shoot it. And he can really push it as well. He finds Roach in transition, and Roach is going to the line for three. And Keyshawn George just wanted to do a flyby, but couldn't help it with that left hand. Just got a piece of it. Looked like the hands of Jeremy Roach as he was letting that go. Just got his hand as he let it fly. This is too hard to keep your hand out of the cookie jar there. You just want to fly by and make the shot a little bit more difficult. Make him see you. And that's a big one for Miami because that is the second on Keyshawn George and as thin as they are to lose him for what looks like an extended period of time. Jeremy Roach shoots 86 percent from the foul line. That's fifth in the conference. Kind of weird to see Duke wearing white on the road. It is, yeah. Because of these uh, new Adidas Fear of God uniforms Miami has. George now, after the second free throw, making his way to the bench. Ja'Kai Robinson will make his debut. Not a guy who gets a ton of minutes, although a little bit more recently. But for George, who knows how long Jim Laranega is going to sit him if he keeps him out the rest of the half. But that is a major loss for Miami. I don't think you can afford to keep him out the rest of the half. I kind of like the Miami uniforms. They're interesting. Although Jim Laranega has given off kind of a Bill Belichick vibe with, with <laughs> his garb yeah. there. <laughs> Jim Laranega can make anything work. <laughs> he is one of the best storytellers. He really is. I've ever met. Yeah. Uh, we were asking him today, what was it like playing for Dave Gavitt when he played at Providence? And uh, we should have had him mic'd up. It was just a great story impeccable memory for things as well. Joseph with the ankle breaker but can't hit the three. And Ryan Young who has checked in for Filipowski down with the rebound. The fifth year senior former Northwestern player. Miami trying to blitz the ball screen out front and recover. Caleb Foster couldn't get to the rim. McCain wow. a deep one. I mean they've got a big logo but he was on it. He was on it. That was 30 feet. You got to figure Miami needs a big night out of Wooga Poplar if they're going to win this one. Joseph kicks it to Watson. Now Poplar. Step back. Won't go. Really good recovery to Poplar by Mark Mitchell. But so far, the Miami ball movement has been really good. You know, Jim Laranega has been talking to his team about when they catch and shoot, they are really efficient. When they shoot off the dribble, far less so. Ball saved in the corner by Foster. Still 10 on the shot clock. Proctor calling for the ball screen. Young on the roll and the kick. McCain. Young, the offensive rebound. What a great kick. 
Foster buries the wide open three. And Ryan Young is kind of a glue guy when he gets out there. He just makes you know, these hustle plays. I mean, that was a great offensive rebound. He couldn't get the stick back, but had the presence of mind to look to the three-point line for a step in three. That was a big time play by Ryan Young. And Duke will take an 8-0 run into this timeout that Jim Larinaga just called. The lead for the Blue Devils is up to 10. Hey, you seeing this? Wait, where's the dish? There ain't one. You're telling me you can get direct TV, the good stuff, and you don't need a satellite dish? Oh, I used to love doing my business on those things. Oh, you're one sick pigeon. Them dishes kept the rain off our beaks. We just have different priorities, is all. Satellite free direct TV. Never thought I'd see the day. Well, our lifespans are quite short. Stream direct TV without a satellite dish. I'm gonna do this thing with my neck just for a bit. Classic roast beef and crispy fish? Just two for six bucks? If Arby's wasn't already at Arby's, it'd be on its way to Arby's right now. Arby's, we have the meat. 10 years from today, Lisa Schneider will become the undisputed leader of a ginormous pack of dogs. Rescue dogs, to be exact. A second act made possible by the career reskilling courses Lisa's already taking now with AARP to help make sure her income lives as long as she does so she can finally run with the big dogs and the small dogs who just think they're big dogs. That's why the younger you are, the more you need AARP. Domino's Perfect Combo includes two pizzas, two sides, and a two-liter bottle of Coke. So we were asking real people how much they think all of this costs. 35, 45, 50. 1999. I'm about to order that when I get home. It's Domino's Perfect Combo, and it's all just 1999. This time belongs to those who want it most, where youth is tested and greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. Here we go. Introducing the all new TD Clear credit card with no late fees and no interest, just a simple monthly fee. That's how credit can be unexpectedly human. Call 1 844 TD Clear for details about credit costs and terms. Day with Mentos gum. Yes to fresh. Stock up and save at Michael's. Fill your basket for less with hundreds of bogos on creative faves. Our crew services cars from bumper to bumper. Oil change, tire rotations, repairs. Kevin and Coach in studio, Terrence Shannon in Illinois closed out the first half on a 20 to 7 run. The guy can grab a rebound, push it in transition, and finish at the rim in three dribbles. Touchdown lead for the Fighting Line. I meantime, Joe Girard and Clemson shooting 52% right now in Atlanta. You got to run Joe Girard off the three point line, so what does he do? Shows the ball, one dribble, pull up, bam. Eight point lead for the Tigers, Dan and Jay. Kevin Seth, thank you very much. The Tigers 7-7 seven and seven in the league, but had a very good non-conference. Joe Lenardi's got them pretty safely in right now as a six seed. They're 28 in the net. You got Carolina and Duke up top. Looks like they might settle a conference championship on the last Saturday of the regular season. Virginia, which had been doing really well, they've now lost two out of three, and they got blown out by Virginia Tech on Monday. Lost by 34 points, and Wake beat Pitt. Last night, 91 to 56. Joe Lenardi still got Wake as one of the first four out. Wake plays Duke on the weekend, by the way. Wake feels like a very dangerous team, but it may, for this league, it may come down to Wake, Pitt, Virginia. How many of those can get in unless somebody makes an incredible run in the conference championship? Yeah, Wake needs uh, some more quad one wins. They've got a great opportunity on Saturday. But Miami just got another really good shot by Wooga Poplar on a little fade screen on the left side. Miami's got to start knocking some of these down. They can't rely on their defense to get stop after stop. They got to start scoring. And they're asking guys to play 
more minutes and in bigger roles than they normally do because of the injury to pack the illness of Cleveland and now the foul trouble of George good cut but good defense by Mitchell got a hand on it Joseph with a tough turnaround rebound young when you keep missing some of these shots and that was that was not an easy one so you keep missing some of these shots it puts even more pressure on your defense to get stops Foster got it and Duke is shooting it well. They are five for ten from beyond the arc. Caleb Foster was two of his last ten from three over his last five games coming into this one. But he is better from three than he is from two. So you have to run him off that line. Omir around and off the rim. And he is kind of mumbling to himself getting back on defense. Oh. Ain just beats him down the floor and stuffs it. He is a star. I mean, Jared McCain has a winner's gene that just not every player has. And he is starting to unleash that on everyone. What a play by Jared McCain. Your natural cottage cheese. Only Daisy Cottage Cheese will do. It's a 13 0 run for Duke, and the loudest two points of the run coming right here thanks to Jared McCain. A little crossover in transition outside the charge circle. He took off, and he is in attack mode. and Seeing a big basket too. His last two games, 26 points per game, 11 of 18 from three coming into this one. You know, you talk about how things can change from November to February and then into March, and there are certainly a couple of examples of that on this Duke roster. Jared McCain is one of them. I mean, look at his production, his improvement over the last three, four months. And you talked about Mark Mitchell. He's a he's a better player now than he was at the beginning of the season. Omir working hard as he always does. And another shot clock violation. Or did it hit the rim? The officials are going to discuss. Did the initial attempt by Omir hit the rim? And they're going to have a look at it. The dreaded circle of the finger, which means <laughs> we're going to, to replay. It did look like it hit the bottom of the rim. Yep. That is the rim. Yes. So that's a 20 second reset. Even though it hit the rim, those are shots that usually Norchad O'Meara finishes. I mean, he's shooting over 60% from the field. That's second in the conference, but we've seen him miss a couple of bunnies. He does have some traffic around him, but usually that's the bottom of the net when he gets that close to the basket. You know, Jim Larinaga has dealt with just about everything a coach can deal with. How do you, you know, put aside who you don't have and just focus on who you do have as you try to win a game? I mean, the easy thing to say is next man up, but players will say they want an opportunity. Now they've got it. But there's nothing you can do about injuries. You just have to deal with it. But it means that guys like Bensley Joseph, like Keyshawn George, are going to have to play more minutes and take on bigger roles. And you take a look at Nigel Pack right there who's one of the best shooters in the country he was all big 12 when he was at Kansas State he's an all ACC player and he's leading this team in assists averaging about 14 a game and he's made close to 53s on the season you take that out of the lineup you take a versatile uh, player that can play the four a really tough matchup in Matthew Cleveland out of the lineup that's a lot to make up for and it goes to show you how different every year can be in this or any other sport. This is a Miami program, as people well know, that went to the Final Four last year. And they've got a number of guys back from that team. Well, they were top ten early in the season yep. before they went to, to Kentucky and Rupp and got beat there. But if they had their full complement of players all season, I think it would be a top 20 team all year long. Boy, and just nothing going down until then. On the third try, Omir gets it to go, and that'll snap the 13-0 route. How do you right, move, how do you move him away from the basket you ask nicely <laughs> yeah, when he gets position he's immovable 
how many guys in the country are as strong as him. He's listed at 6'7", probably more like 6'6", but good luck trying to displace him. Numbers again. Blakes is down, so it's five on four. Do they realize it? They don't take advantage of it, though. A pretty good stand made by the four Duke players getting back in transition so Blakes could get back. Boy, and I don't know if... I mean, Omir can do some stuff out there, but Blake's hounding him as he kept dribbling beyond the yard. What a rebound. Michael Nwoko off to Ja'Kai Robinson, who's got a chance for three. That was a fantastic rebound by Michael Nwoko, who's got terrific size and he's really talented. Tough shot by Joseph, but nobody really got a body on Nwoko, and he just flew in and really good cut by Ja'Kai Robinson. Nwoko is a guy that Jim Laranaga says he has spent about as much time with him as he has any player he has ever coached. And if you want to boil the message down, as Robinson goes to the line, if you want to boil the message down on Nwoko, it's do the things you do well. Keep it simple. You know, the stats are when you do this, it works this percentage of the time. But when you do that, not so much. And when he keeps it simple, he can be a very effective player. And Nwoko came in from prolific prep where he played with Aiden Holloway, the freshman from Auburn. Eve Misi as well. Corner three, Jeremy Roach. That's a terrific pass by Tyrese Proctor. He threw a double team and was able to see over it to get it to the opposite corner. That's a next level pass. Doing a pretty good job of being there on the catch. They're not in passing lanes, but that was really good defense by Tyrese Proctor. He was in the gap on that right handed drive by Bensley Joseph. That makes it a one way recovery if Joseph passes out of it. But that was great position defense by Tyrese Proctor. And on the possession arrow, it's going to go over to Duke. Filipowski to inbound, 4 12 to go in the first half. And Duke leading by 14. And Miami shooting just 31 percent, two for 11 from three. Duke 48 percent, six for 12 from three. Roach will try another one and hit another one. Boy, when Sean Stewart set that screen and rolled to the basket, Jeremy Roach just lifted up. So all the actions going to the basket. He went against the grain. And he wasn't wide open, but he was ready to shoot when the ball arrived. He, he's having a great year. Just so mature in his approach and his play. Poplar. Now Joseph. Poplar from about four feet behind the arc. Will miss it in the foul on the floor. To take us to immediate timeout, Jeremy Roach shooting 44% from three on the season. And Jay's got a couple already tonight. Just that great pass to the corner, wide open for the shot, and off the roll by Stewart. He just lifts up to the three-point line, drills two in a row. How many times have I felt this good? Let me count for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's your anniversary today. You could have arrived empty-handed, but you exist in a world where it's easy to get flowers this fresh. Your door to better relationships. DoorDash. Discover customer service. This is Maya. Oh, hi, Maya. You robots are sounding more human every day. At Discover, everyone can talk to a human representative. All right, prove it. Wait, are you a robot? 24-7 US-based customer service. How would I prove that I'm not? This looks like an actual farm. It looks cute on the app. Meanwhile, at a Verbo, <laughs> when other vacation rentals aren't what they're cracked up to be, try one where you know what you'll get.
The most important part of your business are all the people who come through your doors every day. And CentOS can help you take care of them. Your dedicated CentOS service reps will provide the essential products and support to help keep your employees performing at their best. So your business can too. Get CentOS. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. It was the one restaurant that we could afford on like our $3 per diem. Like you were living when you went to Taco Bell. The Jeep Halftime Report is on the way. Coming up, a great matchup in T-Town with Red Hot Florida in town. Plus, Rick Patino and St. John's back at it tonight. Coach, a lot to like about Duke so far. Duke's backcourt is absolutely terrific. You see these guys grow, develop, mature. The one thing, if Kyle Filipowski continues to be aggressive and play with force, Duke will be a team to reckon with in the NCAA tournament. Key, Filipowski establishing himself in the low block. Dan and Jay, we will see you at the half. We will see you at the half, fellas. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Miami. And you are looking here on the left of your screen, my wife, Lauren, on the right of your screen, Jay's wife, Wendy. We asked them to come with us all the time, but when we said Miami, all of a sudden, boom, they show up. Well, actually, on the right, that's my college girlfriend. Don't tell me. <laughs> Other than their choice in life partners, they've never made a poor decision in their life. <laughs> here comes the double. When Norchetto Mir catches it, he gets double. Duke's defensive game plan not only has been good, it has worked really well. Great pass. Yeah, how about the ball movement by the Blue Devils tonight? Nine assists on 11 made field goals. Holy cow, that almost went. That almost was a basket for Sean Stewart, but now he commits a foul. And Mark Mitchell coming back in as a somewhat dejected Sean Stewart is heading out. Stewart's given some good minutes, especially over the last several games. He can come in with that athleticism, play hard. And that's a different dimension. You talked about Duke switching everything, and Mark Mitchell can switch on to anybody and guard them well. Truly a one through five kind of guy. Now O'Meara's got McCain on him. Filipowski over to Held and got a piece of it. He drives right into Filipowski, so you're driving right into 6'11 or 7 feet. Transition three for Jeremy Roach, his third free of the game. And Duke is up 20 right now. So difficult to get back in transition after a turnover and not only stop the ball, but get out to the three-point line. You know, Duke's got so many different shooters. And this would have been a tough task for Miami at full strength and they are anything but without Nigel Pack and to this point and probably means for the duration of the night without Matthew Cleveland he hasn't played either tonight as Poplar drives and draws the foul. And Norchad O'Meara when he set that ball screen he just rolled Jared McCain down in the post and when he tried to take McCain he just drives right in to Kyle Filipowski. And that led to an advantage situation. You take the ball into the lane. Bensley Joseph has to stop the ball, but he can't stop the ball and guard Jeremy Roach out on the perimeter. It's just too difficult. That's too long of a schlep to get from the middle of the lane out to the three-point line. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> At the line, Poplar, who came into the season as one of the trendiest, you know, he's gonna re he's gonna be a breakthrough guy, reach a new level. And he's had a very good season before the ankle sprain at the end of December. You know, he might have been a first team all ACC conversation kind of guy, but uh, severely sprained ankle. He's come back, but still does not appear to quite be 100%, but even 80% of him is pretty good. Well, he's not he's not the Wooga Poplar that we saw to start the year. Yeah. I mean, early in the season, he was shooting well over 50% from three for a period of, what, 10 games. Yeah, but that injury has really set him back and you give him a lot of credit. He's battled through it and continued to play. He's missed a couple games, but he's really fought through it, but he's not nowhere near 100 percent. Proctor, the stop and go, finds Mitchell in the corner, but he was standing out of bounds when he caught the pass. He just caught that pass and just leans back with that left foot.
Joe Bay off to Poplar. Joseph on the drive. Got it on the rim. Omir had it knocked away. And it's Duke Ball. Miami's getting more close in opportunities. They've just been unable to knock some of these shots down. And sooner or later, missing those kind of shots takes some of the steam out of your defensive effort. Proctor's calling out a play as he moves it into the front court. He's going four across. And again, everybody gets a touch. Proctor the miss, O'Meara the rebound. Really good ball movement. Goes side to side. They were well spaced out. And that spaces out the defense and stretches it. Well, that's a tough shot, but Poplar is going to bang it home, a three-pointer, and it's 38-23 as John Shire calls a timeout. Great games coming your way on Saturday, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, number 10, North Carolina. They are in Charlottesville to take on the Who's. Jay and I uh, and the rest of our crew will be in Lawrence as Texas comes to town to take on the Jayhawks and then Texas A&M and Tennessee at 8 Eastern. All that coming your way Saturday right here on ESPN. Get to go to Allen Fieldhouse and eat some of that popcorn. There's excellent popcorn. And didn't really know that uh, this until we came to Miami for this trip. But Miami has some of the best milkshakes Ooh. that I've ever had at the baseball stadium. Ooh, it's I ridiculous. I think there's an excellent chance we might have some video from our milkshake odyssey from earlier today in the second half. Or we might just go back and get another one. <laughs> Duke called that timeout to get organized for this last minute of the half to finish it strong. What Duke wants to do is get two really good offensive possessions to get a stop to try to stretch this lead. Foster gets a good look. And Filipowski comes down with it. Proctor's going to back it out. John Shire yelling out of play. Proctor hears it, and now they try to execute. Foster the floater. Tips it out. Duke's got it again. Filipowski, no. Mitchell, yes. Right over the top of a Miami rebounder. Joseph misses the three. Mitchell down with it. And the first half that John Shire's got to be awfully, awfully happy with comes to a close again to Miami. Uh, on behind Kansas, but this team is maturing and starting to hit its stride at just the right time toward the end of the season as we're headed toward postseason play. Jim Laranagas made one change in the five who were starting the second half. Michael Nwoko is starting the second half. Paul Jobe started the game for Miami. The same five out there for John Shire. Nwoko was active, got on the glass, and and. Just kind of scrapped and clawed and fought and got got some extra possessions for Miami. They just couldn't take advantage of. Well, he's a true post presence, but the the real benefit I think is having Keyshawn George back on the yeah. floor. Picked up those two fouls, sat the rest of the first half. Missed the last uh, 9:45, I believe it was, of the first half. He misses the three from the wing. The Duke's gap coverage has been really good. You know, they're getting into the right help position so they don't have to help and recover. They're already in position for help. And then they're making a one way recovery out to their man. Roach has it knocked away, gets it back. Three threes in the first half for Roach. Foster on the drive. Filipowski wide open. And the rebound down to Foster. Long shots lead to long rebounds. The guards can get those. And the second time it'll go. Filipowski with the three, the ninth of the game for Duke. It's just amazing, Dan, after an offensive rebound. That is the best time to shoot a three. And Kyle Filipowski, you don't expect your big guys to get out there. Good defense by Jared McCain to keep the ball away from Wooga Poplar. He just blew up that handoff opportunity. Mitchell doing a really nice job staying in front of Keyshawn George. 
And now Roach called for the block. Miami's starting to mix in some shot fakes when the ball moves from side to side. And when you're shot fake against a recovering defender, they're more likely to bite on that fake. That was really good by Keyshawn George. If you ever want to see some NBA scouts, uh, Keyshawn George usually draws a crowd. There are a number of NBA scouts here today, here tonight, looking at him, among others. Obviously, interest in Filipowski and Proctor and Poplar and, and other players as well. Jared but, McCain. Yeah, Jared McCain, yeah, with the way that he's playing in recent weeks. Joseph, the lefty, scoops it up and in with the right. Bensley Joseph is a good player. He puts great pressure on the ball. He's always been, you talk about a glue guy, he's always been that three and D type. But in this game, he, he's really got to look to score in this second half and be more of a threat. When everybody's healthy for Miami, he comes off the bench and he comes in and mixes it up defensively and creates some chaos. But they have needed him as a starter a lot because of all the injuries they've dealt with this year. Poplar, pretty impressive stuff, and he's rewarded with a trip to the line. So shifty with the ball, able to get by Mark Mitchell, who's an excellent defender with great length and athleticism. But Poplar, we saw him last week at Clemson, and at practice, he was limping just walking around. You couldn't tell as much when he was running, but he was compromised. Uh, but Jim Laranega said he had his best practice yesterday since he's been hurt. And he looks a lot better today than he looked a week ago. And even with the ankle sprain at the end of December and how that slowed him down a little bit, you can still see the huge strides he has made from last year to this year. Remember, they had Isaiah Wong, Jordan Miller, Final Four team. He's in a bigger role this year and has stepped up into it very nicely. Old school development of a player. He might have been the, what, the fourth option last year in the offense. Now he's option number one. Give the name Nicene. Everybody knows him as Wooga, the best Wooga you've ever seen in college basketball. Uh, what about Wooganowski from <laughs> Something About Mary? Fair. You you have to every time I hear Wooga, I think yeah. of Dom Wooganowski. Roach. His fourth three of the game, and from our vantage point where we are calling this game from, Roach was right in front of us, and you could see, Jay, it was right on line as he knocks down another one. His form is terrific. He's having a career year in all of his percentages, a career year in assist turnover, and a career low in turnovers, period. Because he's had, he's had the kind of year you dream of for a senior. It's been fantastic. Poplar almost slipped and then threw it away. And Jim Laranega is yelling at him, shoot the ball. He didn't like the kick out to the wing. He said he got into the paint, shoot the ball. And he might be feeling that ankle a little bit. Looks like he's trying to kind of jog it off as he makes his way back down on defense. Omir gambles. Filipowski has it. Pass just a little bit off. Otherwise, Roach would have had a three. Instead, he's got a trip to the free throw line. Jeremy Roach was good against North Carolina at 20 points in that game. But his last game against Florida State, a road win for the Blue Devils. He had 17 points, four assists, just sort of another mature game. Like that, that's the, the word that keeps popping into my head is his approach has been so mature. His play has been so mature. Remember when Tim Duncan went from a junior to a senior, his numbers didn't shoot up or anything, but the maturity of his game was just so impressive. And I'm not comparing him to Tim Duncan and his, his impact, but I'm just saying that's the kind of maturity you're seeing in, in Jeremy Roach's game this year. And in the ACC play, Jeremy Roach is 44 for 49, including those two makes. 44 for 49 from the free throw line in conference games. Out guarding with their heels on the three point line, but where their help defense, Miami's seeing only bodies. They're not seeing angles or paths to the basket. The help defense has been in really good position for the most part this entire game. 
talk about their defense in, in general. We've talked a lot about their offense tonight. Duke's a very good offensive team, and you talked about the upward trajectory that they are on. How good are they defensively in your mind? They're a different defensive team than people may think of Duke from years or maybe decades past that are out in passing lanes, forcing a lot of turnovers, choking off your offense. But 22 of the 25 opponents that Duke has played to this point coming into this game, Duke's held their opponent under their, their scoring average on the season. So they're only giving up about 66, 67 points a game. And their defense has been, I would call it bend, don't break. You know, they're not a high turnover forcing team, but pretty solid rebounding team, so they don't give you a lot of second shots. It's a really good defensive team. I tell you, it's going to be fun. Saturday, 2 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Duke is at Wake. Wake is a gifted offensive team at times. They just scored 91 against Pitt. I think that's going to be a lot of fun at Wake Forest on Saturday afternoon. Wake Forest can really shoot it. They shoot it from multiple spots, and they can stretch it. Duke in control. When you share a hotel room with your kid, you also share a bedtime with your kid. But if you get an Airbnb, you get to pick your own bedtime. We're in the security business. Our job is to help people feel safe. Not only our customers, but those who matter most to them. Just like our company does for us. We have great benefits from principal, so I know I'm taken care of. And not just me, but the ones who matter most to me. Hey, you seeing this? Wait, where's the dish? There ain't one. You're telling me you can get direct TV, the good stuff, and you don't need a satellite dish? Oh, I used to love doing my business on those things. You're one sick pigeon. Them dishes kept the rain off our beaks. We just have different priorities is all. Satellite-free direct TV. Never thought I'd see the day. Well, our lifespans are quite short. Stream direct TV without a satellite dish. I'm gonna do this thing with my neck just for a bit. Crunchy. Ooh. Tasty. Oh. Sweet or savory. Always satisfying. Give me blue diamond. Crunchy, tasty, sweet or savory. Always satisfying. Give me blue diamond. Oh. Crunchy, tasty, sweet or savory. Always satisfying. Give me blue diamond almonds. Here's your biggie bag. All that food for five bucks, right. that's my go-to. Ooh, that's my ride or die. <laughs> Just like you and me. Bag boys. Bag boys, what you gonna do? Don't. What you gonna do Don't. when we bring your do food? It. Go biggie and get all this with the JBC bag for just five boys, bucks. to love you forever I'm yours forever I do every kiss begins with K when you buy 10 tickets on Vivid Seats you get the 11th ticket free I wonder what my 11th will be hey, you trash living rent free in a hockey player's head <laughs> Maybe just make some noise! What's your 11th? Welcome back. Let's take a look at Duke's Jeremy Roach, a former McDonald's All-American, having himself a very fine night so far. Yeah, Jeremy Roach is just having a spectacular year. We've chronicled the fact that his numbers are up in just about every category, but his leadership has been a huge factor in the development of this Duke team. He's just a steadying influence on the floor, never changes expression. Yeah, he went through a little injury thing himself and fought through it. But they, we could have picked a bunch of McDonald's All-Americans off this Duke roster. Remember and then the Tyrese Proctor was a Macca's All-Australia. <laughs> the That's Australian what they call equivalent? McDonald's. That's yeah. what they call McDonald's. <laughs> I, I learned that from Johnny Furphy. Nice. And remember kind of midway through last year where there was a bit of a role change right Proctor getting on the ball more Roach playing off the ball more and it really seemed to have benefited the team last year uh, and again this year. 
Well, Duke has multiple point guards. Yeah, like you count Jeremy Roach as a point guard that can play off the ball. Proctor can play off the ball. You know, Caleb Foster comes in, he can handle it. Mitchell knocks down the three. But that's seven of 15 now in ACC play for Mark Mitchell when he started the season. He might have been what? Two of 17 to start the year and teams weren't even guarding him like Arizona didn't guard him Arkansas didn't guard him and he fought through it Jay they've got 11 threes already tonight that matches their high in any ACC game and there's over 15 minutes to go their high in any game was 13 back of the non-conference against Bucknell Mitchell with a nice look to Foster and it is one of those nights where they just can't miss well, they're 12 all, of 21 they're all catch and shoot you know they're drawing the defense they get it inside and Mitchell drew two defenders everybody was sucked in well inside the three point line for Miami and just a really good kick out to Caleb Foster stepping in Joseph no long rebound to Roach and here they come in transition he's going to pull up and it is out of bounds back to the Hurricanes that is, it's been like Pleasantville for Duke. Yeah. You ever see that movie where yes, they I never did. missed? Yep. An outstanding display of passing and shooting. And those two things often go hand in hand. Was it Jay Wright who said, if you want to see a great shooting team, I'll show you one. It's a great passing team. Because you get the good looks. Jim Larinaga took Keyshawn George out of the game a couple of minutes into the second half very early on for one of their best players. He's brought him back in. George missing a lot of time with foul trouble tonight. And boy, they, if they're going to have a spark, he's a pretty good guy to give it to him. There's a switch and Filipowski on George. He can drive him. Poplar with a three, the assist to George. And that's why Jim Larinaga wants Miami to take more catch and shoot shots rather than off the dribble their efficiency goes way up it's like 1.16 points per possession on catch and shoot Good play by Poplar to keep it in bounds no look feed ahead to Omir and they got Filipowski on a on a hold Boy, Omir is frustrated he just doesn't miss shots like this and he's missed several that were near point blank he is three for ten tonight, and he is a 60% field goal percentage guy on the season. Tough stretch right now for the Hurricanes. Again, uh, mostly injuries, illness now for Matthew Cleveland as well, and you can see. Uh, the face of Jim Larinaga, how he's feeling on the bench right now, but his team down to by 20. Cleveland hasn't played under the weather the last few days. He warmed up, but has not appeared in the game. And at this point, obviously, it seems highly unlikely that he will. And the Hurricanes looking at the very real possibility of their fifth consecutive loss. Mid-range jumper for Christian Watson. It's so tough to go into a game like this and be shorthanded like Miami is. I mean, you take two starters out that are averaging both Matthew Cleveland and Nigel Pack, both averaging over 14 a game, and both capable of getting you 20 or more in any given game. And realistically, the way things are going for Miami, 15, 11, 6, and 9 in the league, for them to make the NCAA tournament at this point, realistically, they've got to win the ACC tournament. If they could pull off a miracle and come back and win this game, that's a big time quad one win and all that. But it looks like the Hurricanes are going to have to do a lot of damage in D.C. if they're to have any kind of a change. Yeah, it is starting to look that way. And one of the questions you have is how many high value targets do they have left in the regular season? Right. And because of the way the rating systems work, you know, the ACC is a really good league, especially at the top. But some of the teams near the bottom of the league, if you're playing them, they're, they're still capable. They're just not consistent. And their numbers aren't good. So when you beat them, it doesn't give you as much of a bump as you would expect in a, a regular ACC year. McCain, nice little bounce pass to Filipowski. And again, outstanding ball movement by the Blue Devils. Corner three won't go for McCain. George the rebound. And that ball movement accompanied by penetration and then a kick is really difficult for Miami to defend. 
and George can't get around people, whether it's Mitchell or whether it's Stewart or whoever's in front of him. And George is a he's a really talented player, but he has not been able to get around Duke defenders and really create tonight. Well, Duke switching has affected Miami. And they're switching one through five because Kyle Filipowski, you can switch with him and you still stay in front of you. Another wow. close in miss with the left hand. And give him credit for continuing to work. He got hit on top of the head. He's frustrated. You can understand going to the free throw line, but it has been a tough, rough night for North Chad O'Meara. Well, North Chad O'Meara is in the top 10 in the ACC in so many categories. Among them, he's second in the league in rebounding and second in offensive rebounding. He is just a, a difficult player to keep out of the lane and to keep off the glass. You can talk about blocking him out, but you need to bring a gang with you to do it. Because he is as strong as any player in the conference, maybe any player in the country. And we got some of the stats on his bench press and his squat and things like that. I mean, bench pressing 185 pounds 28 times in a row. Max squat was 450 and then the strength coach at Miami said you know what that's enough. Yeah that's enough. Yeah. Who among us hasn't been in that situation. Uh, same with me <laughs> when I get out of a chair. <laughs> that's enough. I am told that. Did you bench 400 pounds back at Duke once once. Yeah. That's one more than me. <laughs> one more than most. Proctor's step back. And he's going to the line. The foul on Nwoko. Well, you start to look at some of the other teams that are at the top of the polls, whether it's I still think that UConn has separated a little bit, even though they, they lost to Creighton on the road in Omaha. But Duke is, is looking like a team that they can challenge anyone. You didn't feel that way early in the season or maybe mid midway through but this team is trending in a really really positive direction. Now UConn and Purdue with the recent losses uh, Arizona's had a couple of surprising losses but it's college basketball right it, ha it happens to everybody and uh, I'm with you again Duke has won 15 of its last 17 one of the two losses was to pit when they didn't have Roach or Mitchell. Beautiful feed from George to Nowoko, who slams it home. That middle pick and roll is so difficult to deal with. And Nowoko has talent. Yeah, he looks he's like he's going to turn into a player. Oh, he's going to be really good. Mitchell baseline and an offensive foul. Mitchell doesn't love the call, but not much has gone wrong for Duke. Keyshawn George, Michael Nwoko, trying to get things going for Miami. They still got a long way to go, but down 19. No freezers. How unusual is this for a restaurant? I think that that's unusual because a lot of restaurants have freezers, but we don't have freezers. We have fresh food every single day. How fresh is fresh? It's real food that's coming to our tables. That's what sets us apart. Wow. Wanna Leave works all day, so I can keep working my magic. Just Wanna Leave, 12 hours of uninterrupted pain relief. Aleve, who do you take it for? And for fast topical pain relief, try Aleve. Movement that inspires. Knock, knock. Number one broker here for the number one hit maker. Thanks for swinging by, Carl. No problem. So what are all those for? Uh, this lets me adjust the bass, add more guitar, maybe some drums. Wow, so many choices. Yeah, like Schwab. I can get full service wealth management, advice, invest on my own, and trade on Thinkorswim. You know Carl is the only front man you need. Oh, I gotta take this, Carl. It's Schwab. Schwab. <laughs> Have a choice in how you invest with Schwab. So you're telling the court the squeeze cleans an entire load of kid crud. Yes. And one tiny bottle cleans all these. Yes. So why do other detergents make you use a big cup? So they can sell you bigger jugs. Objection. Overruled. Your Honor, I call Swash Laundry Detergent to the stand. With Swash, the squeeze is all you need for a clean load of laundry. 
You gotta squeeze it to believe it. Arby's crispy fish sandwiches still don't fit on the bun. Arby's sincerely apologizes for continuing to make big old sandwiches. Arby's, we have the meat. to a perfect family vacation? Yeah. Separate rooms. Put the load right on me. Life's a trip. Make the most of it at Best Western. Michael Irvin in the house tonight. Played his college football here at Miami back in the 80s, trying to get the crowd going. Now, how about these new, uh, the new unis that Miami's breaking out at Adidas Creation and the coaching staff wearing kind of these quarter zip hoodies with sleeves and do you think they're drawing a little Bill Belichick inspiration here? That's what I thought when I saw Jim <laughs> come out for the game. They are down 19 to the Blue Devils here. Just over eight minutes into the second half. Miami shooting 31%, Duke 49%, and Duke's made 12 threes in this game. Nowoko turns and puts it up. And the offensive rebound to Joe Bay. Now George, and the shots just will not fall for the Hurricanes. One of the most impressive things about Duke's defensive effort in this game has been the positioning of help. Anytime that Miami's trying to drive, they're seeing a lot of white white shirts. You know, they're seeing bodies, not lanes to the basket. And Duke is switching everything, including Ryan Young switching out on a pick and roll out top and then recovering. And Tyrese Proctor just got a deflection to totally disrupt the Miami offense. Under 10 to shoot. Roach driving, soft off the glass. Mitchell on the glass and draws another foul. Or Mark Mitchell, when Roach drives in there, there was nobody to block out Mark Mitchell. He just got an easy run in, a relatively easy, from the left side on the baseline. And part of that's due to some of the switches, but you're not having blockout responsibilities, but you got to lay a body on somebody. Two of the top teams in the Pac-12 highlight our ESPN women's basketball Thursday primetime matchup. Charisma Osborne at number 12 UCLA hosting Alisa Peely at number 18 Utah at Poly Pavilion. Coverage begins at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. Miami ball as Filipowski comes back in, replacing Mitchell. So now you see Filipowski and Young in there together in the front court for Duke. And we'll see if Duke continues to switch. Now they're just sticking with the double and recovering. And Joe Bay throws it out of bounds. He and Watson a little miscommunication. Miami's had so many different lineups, and not all these lineups have been playing together much this year, even in practice. A low cross screen. That was really well read. But George couldn't handle it. And Roach gets it back for Duke. No reset of the shot clock. Yeah, Roach has set a low cross screen for Filipowski. And Bensley Joseph guarding Filipowski now. Proctor, no. Long rebound to Roach. Yeah, that's just crushing. I mean, Miami's spending so much time on defense. Proctor loses it. And what hustle by Young on what looked like it should have wound up being an uncontested layup for the Hurricanes. Well, impressive hustle by Ryan Young to get back and disrupt that play. That should have been an easy basket for Miami. I mean, they have numbers. They've got basically a 4 on 0 break. But that was a terrific job by Ryan Young not to give up on the play and just sprint down the floor. The guy's got wheels. <laughs> O'Meara back in for Miami. One on one here with Filipowski. 
Here comes the health and just too much size, too many bodies. Uh, that needs to be a quicker move and go up because Ryan Young was just waiting for Norchad O'Meara to put the ball on the deck so that he could go double. Now George's steal. Poplar for three. And Young the rebound. Poplar's had a good game. He doesn't miss many of those wide open shots, especially in transition. So Duke's not trying to take the air out of the ball. They just want to be a little bit more deliberate. They don't want to need to be in a rush right now. Clock's their friend. The double on Filipowski. Good pass. That's got to be a... Yeah, that's got to be a flagrant. Yeah, it? and that's what the Blue Devils are saying. Well, that, that didn't look, at least to me, like a play on the ball. So we'll take a look at it. Yep. But he just gets grabbed around the shoulders, kind of a horse collar type deal. Yep. Yeah, that's got to be a, an F1. Yep. Jim Laranega is talking to the officials now saying there was an elbow thrown before that and take a look at that too. I didn't see that, but I'm sure the officials will take a look at all of it. And it's been upgraded very quickly to a flagrant one, tells uh, say Brian O'Connell, so that'll be two of the ball for the Blue Devils. A foul there, but then the flagrant on the back end of it. So Filipowski at the line, 65% from the line on the season, averaging 17 points per game, better than eight rebounds per game in his sophomore year. Ah! And Filipowski shoots about five free throws per game. You know, that's the most on this Duke team. He gets fouled a fair amount, but I think he can get fouled even more. He plays post and perimeter. Yeah. But if he were to spend a little bit more time down in the post, yeah, he's a dominant post presence. Made them both Duke ball. And the shot clock is saying 2.2, but it's going back to 20 now. It was actually Ryan Young who noticed that and alerted one of the officials. I'm sure they would have found it on their own, but Ryan Young was helping him out. He went to Northwestern. <laughs> Smart guy. Smart guy. Filipowski and a block is the call on Norchad O'Meer, who is probably in the uh, restricted arc. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's in there, yeah. so there's no no question. Right, it's not a help defender. So Filipowski right back to the free throw line. Boy, just a frustrating night for the Hurricanes and for their fans. This, you know, whenever Duke and Carolina go anywhere in the ACC, obviously it's a big deal, and this was a big deal here tonight. But Duke kind of catching to Miami at a time where things aren't going very well, either on the court, they're battling injuries, they've lost four in a row, and crowd was so pumped up for the beginning of this game. And it was close for seven or eight minutes, but then Duke went on a 13-0 run, and it hasn't been close since. When that four-game stretch... You know, Miami was right there in those games. You know, that game we had them at Clemson last week. You know, they played 35 minutes right with Clemson. It was the last five minutes where it just got away from them. But shorthanded is really difficult to play, and especially when you shorthanded two starters, the quality of Nigel Pack and Matthew Cleveland. Right there against Carolina as well. That game was here. They lost by three to the Tar Heels as Bensley Joseph knocks down a three. One of the things for Miami, you want to keep competing, but Jim Laranega doesn't want anybody else hurt as well. The so balancing. When enamel is gone, you cannot get it back, but you can repair it with Pronamel Repair. It penetrates deep into the tooth to actively repair acid weakened enamel. I recommend Pronamel Repair. With new Pronamel Repair mouthwash, you can enhance that repair beyond brushing. They work great together. Ever since switching to Workday, you've been a real rock star. Rock star?
What do you know about rock stars? Billy Idol? I, don't... I mean, where's the skin tight leather? The shoes are leather, I Where's think. the unnecessary zippers? That thing! Billy, Billy, rock star is just how Doug feels when he uses Workday. Thanks, Rory. Uh, I'll show you rock star. Be a finance and HR rock star. Workday for a changing world. Billy Idol just stole your golf cart. <laughs> I love your dress. Oh, thanks. I splurged a little because Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance and I saved hundreds. That's great. I know, right? I've been telling everyone. Yeah, Ricky. <gasps> Did you hear that? So I just said her first word. Can you say mama? Yeah, Ricky. <laughs> Can you say auntie? Yeah, Ricky. <laughs> How many people did you tell? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, liberty, liberty. Liberty. So what is the next big thing? Well, Galaxy believes the next big thing is you. Me? Yes, look at you. You're open to experiment. You open your heart. I have a play this weekend. And with the power of Galaxy AI, you'll open even more possibilities and open your imagination. We're putting all that power in your hands. The next big thing is you. Businesses work best when they put people first. Your dedicated Cintas service reps help make sure your team has the essential products they need, where and when they need them, to help keep them looking great, feeling confident, and ready to be their best. Get Cintas. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. ABC Hockey Saturday is ready to rock. First, Robert Thomas and the Blues face Dylan Larkin and the Red Wings. Then Panarin and the Rangers take on Travis Konechny and the Flyers. An ABC Hockey Saturday doubleheader starting at noon. We're here at Mark Light Stadium uh, for Mark Light Shakes, which I'm told are better than Rough Arena soft serve ice cream, and that's a <laughs> high bar. But I'm looking forward to this, and Mitch is about to make me a J-Row. Chocolate ice cream, fudge, and Oreos. And it's ridiculous. Baseball buddy, vanilla, peanut butter, fudge. Perfection. People have no idea how hard we work on a daily basis. Yes. The things we do for the good of the show. In between both team practices, we went over to the baseball stadium of Mark Light and, and had a shake, and it was a quite quite a difficult day for us. But how about those straws? They were like fire hoses. Yeah. And you know what? Had they offered us a second shake each, we both, we both would have said yes. Our thanks to Mitch Friedman and his son Mark, to Joe Williams and the Miami video staff, our producer Phil Dean, our director Scott Johnson uh, came along. They and came along to get a milk shake. Absolutely. They weren't doing anything. And uh, the, that stand is 39 years old, right? Mitch Friedman has been making milkshakes for 39 years. It's in the Miami Hurricanes baseball stadium. So if you're ever going to a University of Miami baseball game, make sure you stop by. I would go just to have that. Yeah. I mean, the baseball is a bonus. They played UCF today at 5 o'clock. I don't know how the game came out. I already changed my flight to a later one tomorrow just so I can get another shake on my way yeah, to the airport. That was spectacular. Caleb Foster into double figures for the Blue Devils. Omir wide left on the three. McCain the rebound, and it's been that kind of a night for the Hurricanes offensively. They've just never looked like themselves, and as uh, we have both said, you take Nigel Pack and Matthew Cleveland off any team, and your offense is going to suffer. McCain lays it in. But Jeremy McCain has all kinds of game. He can shoot it. He can put it on the deck. He is a good defender, a good passer, and he is starting to really come on as one of the best players in the ACC. And the fingernails are pretty cool, too. Having health insurance is important. So if anyone in your family has Medicaid or CHIP, listen up. Check the mail for your renewal form. Complete the form and mail it back right away so you don't lose your coverage. If you do lose your coverage, 
Visit healthcare.gov to see if you're eligible to enroll in a low-cost, quality health plan. Healthcare.gov. Million-dollar Whopper contest. I can top that. Fried egg. Lettuce and tomato. Ham. Pickle. Mozzarella. Pacroni, bacon. Onions. Onions. Corn chips. Creating your Whopper your way could win you a million bucks. Can you top that? Yeah. Discover customer service. This is Maya. Oh, hi, Maya. You robots are sounding more human every day. At Discover, everyone can talk to a human representative. All right, prove it. Wait, are you a robot? 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. How would I prove that I'm not? Now for just $1.99, enjoy the Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Because we value value just as much as we value tasty burgers, we decided to shrink the price of this melty fan favorite. In finance, they call that one heck of a deal. $1.99 Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. When you're great, your game does the talk. In the ACC, our speech volumes. Three of the last eight NCAA championships. 99 NCAA tournament wins since 2015. Eight NCAA titles in the last 22 years. Six of the top 30 winningest programs in Division I, most of any kind. It's not bragging if it's true. Greatness is what we do. The ACC accomplished greatness. Why did we choose Safe Light? Driving around is how we get our baby to sleep. So when our windshield cracked, we trusted the experts. They focus on our safety, so we can focus on this little guy. Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace. Did you know sweat from stress is actually smellier than other kinds of sweat? That's why I use Secret Clinical Antiperspirant. It provides three times stress sweat protection. Danielle? Secret works. I cannot wait. We're going to Washington, D.C. this year for the ACC tournament. Uh, a look at Joe Lenardi's ones and twos right now, sticking with the ACC. He's got Carolina as a two at the moment, Duke as a four, but the highest of the four, so 13th overall, if you will. And obviously, a lot can and probably will change in the next few weeks, but uh, there will also be some bubble teams trying to play their way into the NCAA tournament in Washington. All kinds of stuff to look forward to. The one seeds to me seem like they're just about locked in. Oh man, That's I mean, you feel for him because he's such a good player, and he's just an, just having such a tough night. And he's working his tail off. Yep. He just hasn't finished some things. But he's had a spectacular year, averaging 18 points a game, over 10 rebounds, three offensive rebounds. He's leading this team in steals. He plays a complete game, and he'd be a great tight end. Mm -hmm. That's the feeling we always have every time we do a, Mi a Miami game, as if an NFL team. Uh, after he graduates, he's going to say, "You want to come for a trial?" Well, an NBA team's going to tell him. Yeah, I think yeah. he's going to play in the NBA. He has improved his shooting range. He's shooting a very respectable 37 percent from three, taking more, making more. Could be the end of the night for him now, with them down 25 and 6:28 to go. When you've had as many injuries as Jim Laranega's team has had this year, you probably want to play it safe and keep your best guys healthy for the next game. They've got Georgia Tech. Coming to town a Saturday afternoon. That game on the ACC network. The Duke switching has really caused Miami some problems. They can't get into the lane. Joseph to the free throw line and knocks down the jumper. Another guy who only knows how to play one way, and that's working his tail off on both ends of the court. Bensley Joseph having a double figure game in this one, but it just hasn't been enough. Filipowski calling for it, gets it, and hits it. And Miami got switched off, so Bensley Joseph was just trying to 
front and sit on the legs of Filipowski, but without any pressure on the ball, you can just see over the top and throw over the top. A good help by Filipowski right on the elbow. Same thing with Proctor. There's nowhere to go. Yeah, they have tried to get inside often, and they haven't been successful very often at all, so taking a deep one, and Joseph hits from about 26 feet away. Well, you give credit to Miami for knocking down that shot, but that's really good help defense by Duke. Their positioning basically has been their help. And that way they're only recovering one way. They're not helping and recovering, which is really difficult. We mentioned Duke is at Wake Forest. Should be a great game Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock here on ESPN. Then they go home to play Louisville and Virginia. Go to NC State and then wrap up the regular season at home against North Carolina on March the 9th. And it seems very likely, Jay, that that game could determine the ACC regular season champion and the one seed in the ACC tournament. Uh, we've seen that a lot over the years in the ACC where Duke and North Carolina are playing for a championship and just not a very good pass guard to guard. Mitchell with two more. He's got 15 to go with five rebounds. He has had a terrific evening. And he really started out strong. His energy is really important for this Duke team. His defense and then you add that offense in. There's some defense right there, right on cue. He's just in a totally different spot than he was at the beginning of the year. It's remarkable. Yeah. Give him a lot of credit. That was a big mental hurdle to get over early in the season. Just shooting the gap, need to make a pass fake there and let him fly by. So Filipowski comes out, McCain comes out, Mitchell comes out, and John Shire will get Jalen Blakes back into the game. TJ Power has come into the game as well for the first time. As we go to the under four timeout here at the Watsko Center with Duke rolling to a victory. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's Planet's Nuts? It's not ah, nuts. It's ah, nuts. Because Planet's Nuts are good. Planter's Nuts. Ah. Nuts. Here's your biggie bag. All that food for five bucks, right. that's my go-to. Ooh, that's my ride or die. <laughs> Just like you and me. Bag boys. Bag boys, what you gonna do? Don't. What you gonna do Don't. when we bring your do food? It. Go biggie and get all this with the JBC bag for just five boys, bucks. Come on in to the Chuck Stop. Everything you need for a road trip to the Final Four. I'm impressed, Chuck. Gonna need these. Pumpkin spike latte and these mud flaps. I can use these. Jen. Hey, guys. Mm, lucky socks. I wonder what Jim Nance smells like. I smell divine. I'm earning double miles with my Capital One Venture card, so it's on me. Well, what up with you and these subs? Man's got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Want to go somewhere amazing? Nice, right? But we're not there yet. Not this either. Still not it. Finding the next stepping place isn't the point. In a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the adventure. I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed to get a deal on these memory supplements, then forgot to cancel. Yeah, well, you know, recognizing a bad deal is a part of the journey. Yes, Eva, would you like to share your breakthrough? I got AT&T's best deal on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and got to choose my plan. Aww. Yes, we don't make you sign up for the top tier plan to get our best deal. I still haven't gone. I subscribe again. Yeah, we know. Get the newest Galaxy on us with any of our best plans, guaranteed. Hey, you seeing this? Wait, where's the dish? There ain't one. You're telling me you can get direct TV, the good stuff, and you don't need a satellite dish? Oh, I used to love doing my business on those things. You're one sick pigeon. Them dishes kept the rain off our beaks. We just have different priorities is all. Satellite-free direct TV. Never thought I'd see the day. Well, our lifespans are quite short. Stream direct TV without a satellite dish. I'm gonna do this thing with my neck just for a bit.
Kevin and Coach in studio. What a finish in State College. Penn State Zach Hicks makes the third of three free throws to give him a 90-89 lead. And then it's Justin Harmon. Really good job of getting Harmon on the run right there. Does a good job of getting downhill, getting to the rim. You want to attack and not settle. Good look. And let's storm the court. That's big time. They should play all their games at the rec center. Rob Dillingham in Kentucky are playing in Baton Rouge next, Coach. Rob Dillingham, he is an absolute bucket. Top prospect in the NBA draft. SEC action coming up next, Dan. Kevin, Coach, thank you very much. Here in the ACC, it has been Duke in command since about seven minutes into the game. Jeremy Roach with a big night. Good balance scoring for Duke. Roach with 16. Mitchell and Filipowski each with 15. And that's why the starters are sitting and smiling right now for the Blue Devils. Yeah, Roach with those 16 points. Four of six from the three-point line. Duke 12 of 25 overall in this game. That is hot shooting. Elsewhere in the ACC, Notre Dame is up 21 on Louisville late in that one. And Clemson at Georgia Tech, Jay. Up 79 to 54 with a minute and a half to go. An impressive road victory is imminent for Brad Brown team. Clemson's been road warriors yep. this year. They, they've won a bunch of really good road games, including at Alabama early in the season. One at Carolina. Those are going to travel well in the committee room. Nowoko gets it to go. And he is giving Jim Laranega. Something to think about. Obviously, they've got Omir in the middle, and generally, Nwoko backs him up, occasionally plays with him, but Nwoko makes it a bit for more playing time. Well, he's made really good strides in practice, according to the Miami staff. And I think you've told the story about how much film that Jim Laranega has been watching personally with Norchad Omir. But, you know, the Duke team has been watching a lot of film lately. <laughs> But some of it has been of John Shire. Yes. Uh, yesterday at practice, Tyrese Proctor coming back from concussion protocol. So he was kind of in and out as a regular member of practice. So at times they only had nine. And John Shire laced him up and got back out there to, to run up and down the court. And A, felt it this morning, said he was really sore. And then the best part, as you say, is when they broke down the film of Shire's defense after the fact, and he wasn't doing some of the things he tells them to do. Which is where the phrase, do as I say, not as I do, comes from. I mean, what's the confusion about? Power. As Shire wanted Jay Lucas uh, to play. Jay Lucas is a year younger than Shire, but uh, Shire drew the short straw on that one. Well, and I gave Jay Lucas a little bit of a hard time. That's him sitting to the right of John Shire. Was a great player not only in high school but in college as well. Played for Rick Barnes for a while, was an assistant at Kentucky to John Calipari before coming on John Shire's staff. I said, Aren't you supposed to be like the Secret Service? You know, you step into danger for the president. Well, I bumped into him on the street today and he had two coffees in his hand. I said, Who's the other one for? And he said, Coach, meaning John Shire. So that was his, his way of trying to get back into the good books with Shire for not taking the minutes yesterday. Ryan Young with a bucket, and now uh, John Shire is going to empty the bench, bringing in Neil Begovic and Spencer Hubbard with a minute 32 to go. And boy, the second-year coach has to be so, so pleased with how his team has played here tonight. Well, this will be fun on the ACC Network at 9 Eastern. Uh, after the Louisville Duke game on Wednesday, February the 28th, how about an extended sit down with two legends, two Hall of Famers, Coach K and Roy Williams. And two of the greatest to ever do it. And Roy Williams had a Hall of Fame career at Kansas before coming to Carolina, then had a Hall of Fame career at Carolina. The Duke fans here want Spencer Hubbard, the 5'8 senior from Los Angeles, to put a shot up. To Harvard Westlake. And look at that hair, man. He's bringing it. Look at that. Make a shot. Would have been in a, a bucket for Begovich and an assist for Hubbard. Neil Begovich is going to the line. He's a grad transfer played at Stanford. He's from San Francisco. And went four years at Stanford under Jared Haas, who played for Roy Williams at Kansas. Not that not that you and I are not jealous of anyone with hair, but <laughs> Duke's got a lot of good hair yeah. going on on this roster. Yep, they do. 
you and I could split that and have some left over and still be happy. I'd be happy with a yep. strand. <laughs> I'm just going to grow my eyebrows really long and comb them back. <laughs> was that necessary? We are. Is that necessary? Are. Yeah. Thought I was working with yeah. real pros here. <laughs> Final 30 seconds here in Coral Gables. Another rebound for Nwoko. Boy, what an effort he has put forth tonight. You know, sometimes in a game where things don't go your way, players emerge. And Michael Nwoko has had some really good moments in this game. It's something that he can continue to build on. Shot clock turned off. The Duke fans want Hubbard to put a shot up, but he is not going to do that as the final seconds stick away. And Duke now with 16 wins in its last 18 games, made 13 threes tonight to tie a season high. And needless to say,